All right, guys, welcome to my commute. I uh, figured out about 18 years into it that when I'm complaining about I don't have time to film the opening and closing my episodes, because they're the worst part. I got to set up in the shop. I got to, you know, go through all that. And when I'm on the bench and showing you guys what I'm doing, it's okay. But um, the rest of it's a hassle. I got to get somebody to help me stop and start, blah, blah, blah. So I am a brilliant man, because today, 18 years into a two to three hour commute out every day, I have figured out that I can set my go cam on the dash and film the open and close. Yeah, the tail dragger from Greenville, Mississippi. Look, it's T-Model Ford. What's it say here? I'm stopping the light. The ultimate T-Model record, a raw rocking brush of breath of fresh air. Yeah. So we're settling for a commute. It's getting cold. There's word that it's going to be uh, snowing when I get home. Or won't that be a first February in California? Anyway, this episode is about scale. Uh, like how to lay out your guitar so the fretting is right. Um, and I'm going to make this real simple for you. When you make guitars, I don't know if you're selling them, I don't know what you're doing with them, but when I make guitars, I don't sell very many guitars. I don't even try to sell that many guitars. What I do with my guitars is there is an episode I did called Why I Do This. And if you watch that, there's a clip of Margaret Garrett from Mr. Airplane Man playing one of my guitars. She's good on it. Um, but you'll learn that what got me into this, see, I, I just looked both ways. Um, but what got me into this is I was attempting to raise awareness for people who are nonverbal, uh, who are cognitively challenged, who have communication issues, or all of that together. And so that's what got me to doing this. And so most of my guitars are in the hands of artists that, that actually play them. I hope they don't hang them on the wall, but I, I make my guitars uh, to play and uh, I focus on durability and individuality. Now, on the individuality part, I really focus on that because, you know, there's a lot of people making cigar box guitars and uh, what I classify as homemade or folk instruments right now. and. Um, a lot of these artists, once it gets out that they can play a cigar box guitar, they basically get bum rushed by people. Uh, so in order to further my interest, which again goes back to uh, kids who have communication challenges, what I focus on is I want the artist to look at the, the guitar and, and be kind of, you know, that shock and awe moment where they look at it and go, this is really a guitar. And then when they plug it in and it actually plays and it plays well, um, I live for that moment. If you've ever had that moment with an artist, it, it kind of confirms that maybe what you're doing has some value. So when you personalize the guitar uh, and you've basically done some background and found some matchbooks and postcards and things that mean something to the artist on a personal level, um, short of being accused of being a stalker or a troll or both um, once they get past that and once they get past the point that it will actually function the most important part then is when they start to play it is it comfortable to them and I will tell you that anybody that's played guitar for any amount of time knows what a Gibson guitar is um, they're pretty much familiar with the scale some standard scales uh, and one of those scales is 25 and a half inches so I stick with that scale and I'm going to show you what all this means when I get to the bench when I get home if I ever get home if I don't get snowed out by getting stranded on the freeway with a quarter inch of snow that's what happens out here anyway if you get the first two prerequisites out of the way it's personalized to them they think it's cool when they put their hands on it and start fretting and running the slide up and down, and there's a familiar, blah, 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 familiarity with what they typically play, 
and they can make something happen right away, that's a good thing. And that's really what scale is all about. So when you're building a guitar and you're laying it out, you need your bridge in a certain spot, you need your nut in a certain spot, you need your fretboard to be cut where the frets drop in at the right spot. Now, if you mess up on any of that, even by this much, what happens is when the artist is playing, they have to make up or compensate for that by this much. So they would move their slide down to get a G note or uh, they would have to fret past something. So it can get to the point where your instrument, while it's very personal to them and it's very cool looking, can be non-functional. So I wanna do this episode because it dawned on me uh, that I'd, I'd never done an episode on, on scale. So when we hit the bench, I'm going to show you how to lay all of this out, measure it out, and make it work. Now, I, I'm going to tell you where I'm at in my um, progression as a builder. There was a time when I bought necks. Um, I would buy them with the fretboard on them. Uh, then I moved to uh, buying the neck and the fretboard separate. I would goo everything up and fret them. And now I'm at the point where I'm making the necks myself and I just did an episode on headstock. So that was kind of the culmination of that. But what I don't uh, make myself is the fretboards. And here's why. Um, I don't have the equipment or the setup to do this efficiently and effectively. So I don't have a source even though I'm an arborist and there's wood all around me, I don't have the source of the kinds of wood that I would like to use for a fretboard. So, there are people that build fretboards um, and slot fretboards, and so I use store-bought fretboards. If you need a source or some hints on where to get these things economically, let me know. So, before we hit the workbench, I want to remind you that at the end of the video is my email address. Uh, the subscription button is in the middle. My playlists are there. So if you're uh, driving down the road uh, in your three hour a day commute, you can just hit the playlist and it will pump through on your stereo and you can go down that rabbit hole. But anyway, let's get to the workbench. So I'm excited to show you what I know about scale. All right, guys, you might be able to tell from the camera angle that we're doing something a little bit different. I shot the opening and close of this one on the GoPro from the dash of my car. And now what I'm trying to do is get some type of an angle that lets you see what I'm working on here. But we're going to be talking about scale here. And uh, what, that, what that basically means is the distance between the knot and the bridge and how that relates to these frets. So if you don't have the scale right and it doesn't match your frets what ends up happening is your intonation isn't correct and and we've already talked enough about people wanting to find your uh the guitars you build interesting personalized and then to pick it up and have something completely familiar that they can just grab a hold of it and play and that's what we're going to focus on is how to set the scale so the thing plays right away for them the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get these out of the way. Uh, this is the coffee can guitar. We've been building the license plate guitar. And um, when you're laying out your scale and your fingerboard and where your bridge is going to go and where your nut is going to go, um, there's a lot of things to think about up front because especially if you're going to, say, lay your fingerboard over this and you want it to come into the to the body of the guitar a little bit there. There's all kinds of things to lay out. So I'm gonna move this stuff out of the way and show you one of my guitars and kind of explain the basics of scale to you. All right, meet Punkin. Punkin was one of my early three strings. It's got the basics of um, what it is I'm known for. It's got my RV St. Drains that hold the box together. Uh, this was, uh, has this, uh, flat pop single coil here um, and this was before I started putting piezos and uh, coils um, but as you can see it's Halloween themed I found a, a graphic and just put on a piece of metal uh, 
tried to match the hardware with black hardware, painted this up, found some Halloween and witch type and cat type things. And um, I was using my uh, canning lid grounding system back, even back then. Uh, but what put me down, the theme on this guitar down the path was, I found this North Mississippi All-Stars gig poster that had this pumpkin on it and uh i was lucky enough to have both luther and cody sign this they they did a gig at shark week uh, a few years ago um that special that they have on i think it's the discovery channel i saw them at manhattan beach anyway they signed it for me uh, but this is a three string i've got it tuned g c g um and i've got one of these gadgets, you know what these are, especially uh, I don't play. So, um, let me kind of explain scale to you. Now, I built everything 25 and a half inches, always 25 and a half inches. Um, that's what I'm comfortable with. People know that scale. Again, if they pick up the guitar and they're used to that. So, what 25 and a half scale means is if I take this ruler, and I put it in the middle of the nut. See, I've got these acorn washers. I've grooved this nut. It fits into a little slot up at the top of the uh, fingerboard. Uh, there's another way I do this where um, this would be flat up here and I would use this bone nut, but I I've done quite a few with these. I like it. It gives you about the width of a dime right here. It's just right. You can file these down once you get them where you're right. But anyway, you take your ruler and you put it your tape and you put it right in the middle of the knot and you come down here where the where the bridge is look at this i was still using bolt bridges somebody finally told me hey the threads on these things will cause your strings to move one way or another and you can't keep it in tune so i took the uh acorn nuts or these th these are actually parts for uh lamps and ground the bottom of it off so it would stay made a mark right here but that knot the middle of that knot is at 25 and a half inches now what that means is all this fretting work that's done in here is proportional to that measurement most importantly the 12th fret is right in the middle of all this and so if it's in the middle of this you know, Reverend Payton told me something one time. I'm going to see if I can't find that clip. I think I recorded. He said that you could literally take a piece of wire, doesn't matter how long it is, and attach it between two points. And if you go right in the middle of that wire, it's an octave above, regardless of the length. And that's the kind of idea here. Reverend, it never ceases to amaze me how quickly you can go up and down the neck on an instrument you've never really touched before. Yeah. You know, I'll tell you, that here, here's what you have to do. You know, first off, as soon as you can you can really separate your your eyes from your ears in terms of playing slide guitar, as soon as you really try to find it with your ears, it opens you up because the cosmic math of it's pretty amazing. You take a string, the halfway point's always the octave. And then those same intervals, you know, uh, are, are, all, are always the same no matter how long it is. So when you go to the to the third or the fifth or the flatted third or the flatted seventh or wherever you're you're trying to find it, you know once you kind of get that down, you know it doesn't really matter the the scale length. I prefer a shorter scale length because it's faster, it's shorter distance between the those notes. So I like shorter scales usually. The twelfth fret needs to be. If it's 25 and a half, it would be 12 and a quarter. So if you come down here to the 12th fret, that's what you would expect to see. Okay, I don't know if you can see this or not, but I've got this snark tuner up here. And when I strum the strings, I want to see G. C. G. Okay, so that's open, I'm hitting. So if I've got my scale right, at the 12th fret, when I lay a slide on there, when I either 
fret this with my finger like so, or lay a slide right there, I should have G, C, G. And I do. Now, if I move this up, say, a quarter of an inch or something was off here, well, what would end up happening is somebody that's trying to fret this thing would be off the same distance that you're off on your scale. So not so critical to somebody who's got a fretless cigar box guitar going on because they can compensate with the slide. But somebody that's trying to fret, they're going to be a half note off, quarter note off. Uh, it's, it's the same thing as having your strings up too high and when they push on them, it makes it sharp, um, but let's turn this up a little bit and see what we hear. I've never really tried to play this thing, but that's kind of the idea. So when you're laying your guitar out, you always want to make sure you know what the scale is. And mark everything out before you start gluing everything up. And let me kind of give you some hints about some of that stuff. Okay, let's start off with making this really simple. How many yardsticks do you know have come out of Beverly Hills 90210? That's a that's special. And shout out to my friends at Pioneer Lucerne Hardware. They've been there forever. I even buy some of my neck wood there. But I told you I do 25 and a half scale. There's 25 and a half right there. Now, I don't use yardsticks a ton anymore. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sacrifice this one. I'm going to go to 25 and a half right there. Well, what do you know? It's right there. I don't really need to do this. But just for clarity's sake, I'm drawing a line right there at 25 and a half. Now, I'm just going to take my flush cut saw here and make sure that the first cut is okay. I want to make sure that I get this right because if I don't, I'm going to end up with a scale problem on every guitar that I measure this with. I can use this for something else, but I'm going to throw that away. Now, I've got 25 and a half inches and I can just pull this up. I'm going to drill a hole in it right there so we can um, hang it up. But I immediately know where 25 and a half is. So I can lay this on anything and uh, take a shortcut. I'm big on templates. Okay, I'm going to start off with this coffee can guitar I'm making. This is going to go out to Oklahoma. Um, I still have to cut um, the spot for the neck in here. And I think I'm going to show you how to uh, do a template for that in an episode very soon. But I'm just going to put this up underneath the end here. Because you can see I've already cut the slot in here. Now, I kind of want to show you something. Before I cut the slot, I needed to know, first thing is, what am I going to use for a, a nut? Well, I don't have that slot for the bolt that I use uh, like on pumpkin. But instead, I'm going to use a piece of bone. Now, I'm going to have to do some work on the bone. But the bone sits right there on the flat spot just before the scarf joint goes down. So what I did was, before I glued the fingerboard on, I made a mark right there. Can you see it? So, before I cut any of this out, I know how big the coffee can is because I can measure it. But what I needed to know is, without the coffee can... Where is my 25 and a half mark going to be? And is all this stuff going to line up and be okay? So I'm going to move this over here. Now you can see I put it just about halfway where the neck is, or, or the nut is going to be right there, see? And then I'm going to end up, my bridge is going to end up right about there, okay? Now, I've got this coffee can that I've already cut this in here. Let's get that on there and we'll sit this all down, get that up there like that, and prop that down. Now, I can't see that mark, but 
if I go back here and lay that down like so, you can see that my mark is going to be right about there. And again, I'm going to do a, an episode on how to make a template to line these all up, but you can see there's marks there that mark out where this is going to be because I'm going to bolt this down and stuff. But again, the important part on the scale of this thing is I put this here and I know that my bridge is going to have to be right there. Now, as usual, I'm going to take, uh, I did an episode called Floating Bridge. So what I do is I get these bridges that are like off of an old arch top. You can order those. Send me a, a request if you need it. But I simply back these out, back the studs out. They have an, a little Allen head there. And then I'm just going to find where I put that mark. Find the center of this center that up here and that's going to be a good position now had I not done all this beforehand who knows it could have been up here it could have been back here it wouldn't have been laid out right so I have a graphic I'm going to put on here and stuff but again so before you do anything you want to make sure that you know where your scale is so it's 25 and a half inches let's check one more time I got this fancy ruler you saw me make a little bit halfway there and you see right there, that bridge is going to be right there. So one more time, I find the middle right there. I hold this down. I take an awl, stick it down through the hole, tap it, uh, do the same thing over here, drill starter holes, put these in. Of course, I got a thin piece of wood up here, but... This is something you want to measure over and over and make sure you got it right. This one is just a tad more complicated. This is one of these license plate kit guitars. Now, in order to get my uh, fingerboard height right, my fretboard height right, I'm going to have to come in here and route this out. I'm actually going to um, put my typical tailpiece here instead of uh, ending it at the end of the box. Um, you saw this in grounding the string so this is this will be sticking out here like so so I marked that off right there I know that's going to end there um, but I have to do a drop down here so I'll do all this cut this here and here right wrong how do I know where to put this because I haven't measured my scale so starting this uh, doing it this way and trying to figure out what's going to look good based on how I want it to look that's not the way to go at it the next thing I have to think about is where do I want my pickup on this license plate well I've decided I want it here um, but how do I I'm still going to use my same setup again back these out pull them out I would really like to have them down in here somewhere I like it when the letter actually is rounded here and here so I can put these here and here where that wouldn't work so well here or, or with some of these letters and numbers. So there's a lot to think about here. So the first thing I want to do before I do anything is kind of figure out where do I want this bridge, right? I kind of want it right there. I think it looks good there. Uh, my volume control will be over here somewhere. I think the scale's right. So... For me to do that, I need to know where this is in relation to the knot, and it needs to be 25 and a half inches apart. You notice I have not put the fingerboard on this yet. Um, there's a reason for that. Um, I've been getting some really nice uh, fingerboards. Look at this zebra. There you go. Hey, Michael. Um, but I'm going to end up putting matchbooks on this, so I, you know, I don't know that you can tell what's under there. So I think I'm going to go with the, the rosewood model. Now it's wider than this, so I'm going to end up gluing it down, centering it, and I've got some cutting to do and all that kind of thing. But again, what we're talking about here is 
Where does 25 and a half end up? Now I'm going to pull this one out of the way and I'm going to use the zebra wood one because I think you can see a little bit better. But let's start off up here. This is uh, from one of the, uh, the guitars or one of the necks from the Headstock 101 episode. And you can see, I hope you can, the, the wide angle here. Maybe I should move this this way just a little bit. The wide angle here, I, think, I hope it catches the scarf joint is coming down right here. So I want to put the knot, not where it's bending down, because if I put the knot there, it will always want to tip back this way when it's under pressure. But I want to make sure that the edge of the knot is right there where it's nice and flat. So I made a mark already right here where my knot is going to be right there. Do you see it? So I start there. I know that my nut is stable. I take and mark that. Now, that is going to be where my fingerboard starts, right there. Of course, turn around the right way. I really don't care about anything else here at all, except that that's right. That's my starting point. So, when I put that there, everything lines up good. That's really my starting measurement point. So, once again, I take this, I put it in the middle of the knot. Because I'm going to shape that knot where it kind of curves up and the strings will really be in contact there. So, where does my bridge got to be? Right there. Now, what if I don't like that? What if I need to go that way a little bit? Well, that's pretty simple. I just move this forward a little bit until it's right where I need it to be. You see that? That 25 and a half mark is right on top of the bridge with the strings. I'm gonna come back here. I'm gonna make sure it's still in the middle and that's good to go. I'm gonna mark everything up right here. Now, the last thing I need to think about here is I want this fingerboard, probably easier if I do it here, to end up coming up to here, okay? Right there, I want it to match right there. So, I have to mark that fingerboard, which I've already done, so when I cut that and route all this, it will all drop down where it's supposed to be, and it'll come out clean. But if I don't think about the scale before I start laying all the stuff out and I've got a problem. So I'm going to move that mark up to here. Check this again. Make sure everything's right. Once I know that's right, then I can start clamping things and gluing things and doing that type of thing. But I'm going to cut this. Make sure that this is okay. There we go. Next to string height. I don't know, it's equal with string height. If your string height isn't right and you're having someone fret, then um, your notes are going to be off. And again, if you're making these for people to play them, they're not going to be happy with that. So to wrap this up, I would typically put a piece of tape right here where I know this was going to be I'll put a mark here here again take an all tap the hole so I know where to drill and then I can go ahead and glue my fretboard on fret it and do what I need to do so hey guys thanks for watching this I've had hell in the beginning trying to get this right and I think I got a pretty good system now uh, just depending on whatever I build and at whether it's one of these or a cigar box or, or a coffee can. I really pay a lot of attention and measure numerous times to get my scale right.
All right, that's it. That's everything I know about scale and how to make your guitar sound right, and get the intonation right, um, and uh, I hope that helped you. Now, of course, you know that I really didn't do the episode, that I'm filming the opening and close at the same time. I'm not much on Lion, um, but <laughs> thanks for watching. I feel so much better that I ate up a couple minutes of my commute. I only have about an hour and a half to go, so hey, I'll just talk to myself. Maybe I should make a channel about that. Anyway, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and give me a like, and hey, thank you, T-Model.